decent yield. There's a big Valas over out there too. Oh god. Oh, yes. Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and the latest character I've put together is utilizing the Cosprey's Malice Sword, which is a excuse for cast on crit these days, and Static Strike as a trigger, paired with the Assassin Ascendancy. The build doesn't necessarily need Assassin for it to work, it's just that it does have quite a lot of nice crit to fill out for all of your spells and your Static Strike itself. But when paired all three of those together, or combining all three of those together, it becomes something quite beautiful. And it just turns into sort of, once again, a manual bomber, like I mentioned with the previous Static Striker, except uh, this seems to be more of a manual bomber in actual sense, rather than just a meme. All you do is stab something a few times and you get charges of Static Strike and then run around. The Static Strike charges and beams hit other things. Whenever they crit, you will be unleashing hell with your Glacial Cascade Ice Nova uh, and both Ice Nova and Glacial Cascade in the chest setup as well. Now I'm just showcasing a few of the heralds in these little clips here uh, just you know to see what kind of flavor you're into for heralds. Build doesn't really need heralds and uh, you will see that in a clip a bit later on where even without a herald the clear is just fine no micros whatsoever but for my personal taste this Bloodguard Herald of Ice is my favorite for the build. So as I mentioned, the build is based around Cospreys Malice Sword. The swords just let you um, cast a couple of cold spells on crit every time you melee crit. And when you pair it with Static Strike, it does turn into a very passive playstyle after you stab something. You just run and get the procs off. In previous iterations of the build, I've done Blade Flurry and Cyclone, and they are both very good triggers, and they're still very viable right now as well. Uh, just the difference is you might be able to get to run around during boss encounters or during certain encounters with your Static Strike, which may in turn create a bit more of a fluid and defensive playstyle for some of the later game encounters. I haven't yet done uh, most things. I'm only, I think, level 87, 88, something like that. Just got up to like tier 10, 11 maps, some um, deep delving, something like level 78 delves and a couple of uh, bosses here or there, and the damage has seemed to hold up really nicely for single target, so it is currently a auto bomber build with some very decent single target indeed, which I'll show you in just a second as well. But for delves, it has been very smooth, where you just stab, run, and you shatter everything, you freeze everything, you chill everything, so it ends up being pretty defensive against most enemies because your freeze chance or your uh, freeze duration is pretty damn healthy and a lot of things just won't ever really be attacking you in general and you can of course build it to be a bit more defensive if you really want to. Uh, I have gone the much more offensive route just to see what kind of damage we can squeeze out of it. So here's an example of an Atsiri run uh, with no Herald and just using Hatred in this uh, setup so no micros and that's kind of what it looks like shooting out your um, Glacial Cascades and it's still pretty effective you don't really need a Herald in the build it's just kind of nice to have one for the extra little pops and also the aesthetics and it's just a normal Atsiri run so nothing too special with the damage there but it is still respectable as you can see and then I've only really done one Elder run up to this point which I'll show you just after this. So for this actual single target setup I am supposed to go with a Hatred instead of a Herald of Ice and that does increase my DPS quite a lot but I of course lose the explosions. It is definitely worth it and uh, it's about trying to fit in all of your auras and um, reservations up to you uh, as to your tailor-made build. So this here is the uh, tier 8, I think, Elder. Nothing too special, but you can see how the Static Strike procs will keep going even after you're frozen, because I still had some beams up, and uh, the trigger is still going off absolutely automatically. So while I was frozen there from Elder's attack, I was still shooting out Glacial Cascades and Freeze Pulse, uh, just 
melting him away just a little bit more. So that's the strength of the Static Strike combo with the cast on crit. Can be used with things like Mjolnir as well, as some people have been popularly doing this league. But for now, guys, that's all of the clips. I will get into what the character looks like, how it's made, and the interactions that are going on to make this build a possibility. So here is the character, he's level 88, uh, assassin called Cold Hard Ass Cock. Uh, it is based off of the Cosprey's Malice foils, as I mentioned. So what they do is trigger a socketed spell on melee critical strike. So don't be fooled into thinking you can like spectral throw with this or something. It has to be a melee critical strike. Uh, so simply you just slot a... Um, spell into each of these. So you have Glacial Cascade in one, and I currently have Ice Nova in my other. So Ice Nova does a good uh, chunk of AoE whenever you want it to, uh, so it's a bit defensive for like delves and stuff. And Cascade will shoot in a line uh, as to whatever it crits with your Static Strike. So the point then is to run Static Strike paired with Ancestral Call. So you can run around, stab stuff, and uh, then you get your crits going. Once you get your crits and your beams going, you then Every time you crit with your Static Strike, unleash uh, your Glacial Cascade as well as your Ice Nova. And it is on a 0.25 second cooldown. Uh, so at best you can release four spells a second, though it is affected by cooldown recovery speed, which I have on my belt and my boots. So you can see over here, my current Ice Nova, um, my current Ice Nova over here has 0.19 cooldown time in that top right hand corner of the window. Uh, if I didn't have those, it'd be 0.25. So realistically, with that sort of cooldown recovery stuff, if you can crit five times a second and have perfect latency, then you can release five Ice Novas a second. It rarely works out that way, but it can be worth to still get this cooldown recovery speed stuff. And I managed to craft it myself, um, the belt that is, and then bought the boots for about one exalt. Not too sure if it's even worth it or if I'm hitting those caps at all, which you can see through path of building and I'll show you in a sec. But yeah, ideally you're gonna have to have your um, Static Strike and your Static Strike Beams, both critting uh, roughly, you know, once um, every 0.2 seconds. Uh, so we'll see if that's actually viable by the end and if I'm actually getting good breakpoints on that. But for now, that's what I'm doing. And so as well as that, uh, my actual setup for the Static Strike has Ancestral Call and Static Strike, but it's also attached to Cast on Crit and also has Glacial Cascade and yet another Ice Nova in there too. Uh, this does not share cooldown with the Cosprey's, so it has its own separate cooldown, meaning I have another Ice Nova over here that will proc separately only off of the chest setup at 0.37 cooldown time. Uh, at base, it is 0.5, so once again, affected by the cooldown recovery speed. Uh, otherwise, when you're going into single target mode for this build, you probably want to chuck a freeze pulse into your uh, setup so that you have a cascade and then a freeze pulse, both doing really good single target damage. Ice Nova is mostly there for the feel of the um, clear and for a bit more safety for your clear as well. And then you'll also probably chuck in a freeze pulse there too. It's currently supported by Conch Effect with Cascade and uh, Hypothermia, and the Ice Nova has Hypothermia and Controlled Destruction. When you have Assassin going, you have quite a lot of crit, so an extra two crit at max power charges to the base of the spell. So instead of um, five uh, Glacial Cascade, we then have seven base crit. You're then rolling with seven power charges throughout the passive tree, so that's a lot of extra crit. And then the um, other assassin nodes give you quite a bit too. So you can see here that with a very little actual crit investment uh, to specific melee attacks or attacks in general, I just have some over here I think. Uh, the rest is generic crit coming from power charges, the crit gem and all of that. You then have static strike rolling at 86 effective crit chance, while um, my Glacial Cascade, for example, is at a nice healthy 99% or 95. Now that's the one in the chest setup, so it does have critical strikes attached to it because I want my static strike to go off as often as possible while the Cascade that's sitting in the Cosprey's Malice has uh, still a 93% effective crit rate. So Assassin does really take your crit just to another level altogether. And uh, that's 
Another thing that I did with the chest, got spells to crit there, as well as the life on the chest. Uh, ultimately, Law Weave might just plain be better for defensive and offensive purposes, but these chests are not terribly hard to get, and I like the look of them, uh, just the way to roll them and all of that. The rest of the gear is pretty straightforward, we're just trying to get accuracy and life and some resists, because uh, the build definitely needs a lot of dexterity and a lot of accuracy for it to not completely suck. Uh, for the proc rate and the hit chance, if you don't have a lot of accuracy, you're going to really suffer on the hit chance. And then lastly, uh, part of why I wanted to make the build is because I managed to find a pretty decent amulet. Uh, it's a shaped amulet and you can get cold leech onto these types of things. And then I viled it and it turns out it has even more cold leech. So it's got like 1% cold leech as well as a bit of crit, uh, multi and the fizz as extra cold. Uh, I do recommend trying to roll an amulet for at least some cold leech. You can do that with fossils as well. Uh, get some leech going somewhere. Otherwise, you can just run Warlord's Mark Blasphemy. Uh, I'm currently running a Frostbite Blasphemy, however, which is just negative cold resist and some freeze chance and all of that. And as well as that, I'm reserving some mana for hatred, only for real bigger, heavier, single target sort of situations. Otherwise, I run uh, Herald of Ice full time, and that just gives me some nice shatters and a bit more clear speed, but also the aesthetics. I then leave a bunch of mana unreserved. I don't currently have any way of getting mana back. It's just pure regen. And as well as that arcane surge coming up it does help the regen just a little bit. But the mana can be a bit of an issue. Currently, I've got no way of taking care of it or I have not taken care of it anyway. It's just regening by itself and I just try not to deplete too much mana too quickly. But you can definitely fix it yourself. Warlord's Mark certainly fixes it. Some uh, mana leech somewhere, some bit more regen. But for now, I think this is fine and I'm just leaving it to regen on its own purposes. Uh, the other links I have here are Frost Bomb attached to Ratchet's Fire, Arcane Surge and Increased Duration. Frost Bomb serves to give negative cold resist to things that it's underneath and as well as that procs arcane surge every time I press it. I do have blood rage over there, uh, frostbite blasphemy sitting there and then fortify faster attacks and whirling blades for our movement. You can also grab a phase run and that should synergize real well with the static strike playstyle where you stab, pop your phase run, run through and shatter a lot of things. I have not yet used it because it hasn't felt necessary but I will definitely be trying out phase run and it will quite likely be a staple in the build. Then got a wise oak just for some extra penetration to cold, a uh, diamond flask and a silver flask can incorporate something like an Atsiri flask as well and the passive tree itself is a bit all over the place and I still haven't fully finalized it because I did go up this way primarily because I wanted to grab um, Heart of Ice. I'm not too sure that's going to be necessary in the end because I do need a lot more life and I'm filling out life instead. So the passive tree might end up going like down here or through here in the end, but uh, still just um, finalizing that for now. The idea is to get all of the power charges on the tree. So you got uh, one, two and three, as well as that some decent jewel sockets because jewel sockets are pretty important for damage in these Cosprey's type builds. Uh, so a bunch of crit multi and just plain damage like cold damage and spell damage is really good. And I've also got a Watcher's Eye that does 15 cold penetration with hatred. So quite a lot of the time I am running Herald of Ice and the Watcher's Eye is doing nothing but giving me a bit of life. But when I, when I swap into hatred that does mean I'm going to be getting a lot of extra damage uh, from the hatred with the damage itself and then the cold penetration. Now, the only other thing I really want to mention about the build is to level it. Um, people do get quite confused about how to level it, when to swap in. It's actually pretty simple in the end that you can really uh, start cast on critting right from level 38. So to level the build, I just grabbed some leveling uniques. You got your, you know, Axiom Perpetuums. I used Ice Nova all the way. You can use Freezing Pulse. So it would be a lot more effective. Uh, up until level 38, at which point, or level 28, you can start using Cascade if you'd rather. But at level 38, you can grab Cast on Crit, make sure you have a couple of Diamond Rings, then you run um, either a Vagan Dagger that does, does uh, Hits Can't Be Evaded, or a Lycosidae, plus some sort of Dagger that gives you Critical Strike Chance. If you're then running a Tabula, you put a Static Strike, an Ancestral Call, a Cast on Crit, a crit strikes and then a couple of spells into your tabula and all of a sudden you have a proper six link uh, cast on crit setup that should work to kill plenty of things 
And uh, with your diamond flask, you're gonna be proccing plenty of times and actually just being a proper cast on crit character without the cosprees. So once you eventually get the cosprees on at 68, you like quadruple your output and it gets so much better. But to begin with, you can easily level with cast on crit at level 38. Just make sure you have the Vagan Dagger or the Lycosidae, a tabula, and uh, try and fill out your crit as early as possible. My first ascendancy, I went and grabbed uh, Ambush and Assassinate because that does help you get your initial procs off a lot easier. But once you get to Cruel Lab, you then unspec that and uh, quite easily grab Deadly Infusion. And that's when your crit really starts to take off. And make sure you grab some of the early crit nodes so you're going through the crit there, uh, getting your power charge, and then moving up and getting your next power charge. It's pretty easy to build uh, from the get-go with cast on crit, and it's very effective for leveling. For now, guys, that's the character. Uh, it's absolutely a pleasure to play and delve so far. I'll probably do it for another day or two and uh, see if it can take on the big cheese Uber Elder. Not too sure if it's that good of a you know boss killing build, but it's very satisfying for actually farming, mapping, delving, and it does have some respectable single target. I'm pretty sure it's gonna kill Uber Elder. It's whether or not it's gonna be very good. I think the Static Strike plus Ancestral Call playstyle will make it a lot easier because I'm going to be able to stab every now and again and then run around getting the procs off. So anyway, for now guys, that's the character. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.